I have this Chilean Mauser. It was originally in the seven millimeter and it's been converted to 7.62 by 51. I've looked at a couple of different hand loading data in two different books and I've reloaded some ammo with 150 grain bullets with some reduced charges on it, uh, not by much. And I was looking at the pressures of the seven millimeter compared to the 7.62 by 51 to see where I could equal them out as far as pressure, uh, muzzle velocity and energy and everything. So I have these rounds right here loaded up. Uh, what I'm gonna do is, like I always do, take a precautionary measure and fire one and check the casing, check my primer and everything before I actually go into shooting this rifle. This may be the only time I actually shoot it and when I'm shooting it each time, I will pull out the casing, check the casing and primer. Uh, also, see how it is as far as extracting and opening it up and everything. So this is the rifle that I have, and then I'll, we'll take a closer look at it. So it's the 1895. So we're gonna go in for a closer look. Like I said, then I'm gonna do uh, one round test firing, check that out. And then I'll see what happens from there. If uh, it doesn't work, then there'll be no more left of the video. So um, let's take a closer look. So here's the rifle. I'll go in, let you see. It has the crest on it. You can see there, 7.62. It's mismatching numbers. Down here, the crest on there, cartouche says 1895 there and there's the ammo that I have I'll turn this over to you yeah, look on the other side. So here's the other side of it. And I was looking online at different places trying to find out when they did the conversions on this, whether it was in the 50s or 60s. I, I couldn't find anything definite. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load up one round, do the test firing, take my precautions like I always do, and then see what happens. All right, so I have a round loaded up into it. I'm going to video this, then we'll check everything, see what happens. All right, there's what that looks like, my casing. I 
I'm going to try to show you what the bore looks like here. If I can get in there. It has good rifling and everything in there. So I'll take a couple more shots. Oh, okay. I've put a couple of rounds through it and I am going to stop right there with that. I have a couple of issues and I will show you what those are. I'm going to load one up here and show you what the first issue is. Then I'll make the adjustment and then I'll fire it and show you what the second issue is. I'll do like I did in the previous one where I covered up to do my safety checks and everything. So let me show you what my first I'm issue. I'm going to show you the first issue or my concern. It is loading and coming up with it. I'm really having to try to force it up in there and I'll show you what the problem is. So as you can see there, the casing is not fully engaged into the bolt face up at the top. It's just stripped it from the magazine, but it hasn't grabbed it correctly. It's not locked up into place there. So what I did to do my firing for the video is actually I levered it up in there to seat correctly. Then it did chamber correctly. So let me show you that. So there's how it's supposed to be setting there into the bolt face. And if I can do this one handed. Well, I may have to adjust it here. All right, so since the round nose ammo that I had hand loaded didn't work in chambering the round, I wanted to go ahead and try the, some of the 7.62 by 51 NATO ammo. So I'm gonna try that and see what happens. And see you there again. It's not letting me fully close that. And if I pull this back, you'll see it still didn't fully engage up into the bolt face the way that it should. So there's the better angle of it. Yeah, you can see the base of the bullet there is, like I said, not fully engaged into the bolt face. And this one still does the same thing as the round nose ammo. So. I just don't think this is going to work. So as you see now, it will close. Previously, it wasn't even allowing me to do that. So that's my first issue with this trying to chamber around. So let me do my test firing again, and then I'll show you my second issue.
right, so I'm gonna do my test firing again, then I'll show you the second issue that I have. All right, get this in the frames, see if I can hold it one hand. Well, that one, that one came out perfectly. The other ones I shot, this action was so stiff that it was hard to pull it. So I don't know what the difference was with that one versus the other ones. But again, with me on those other ones you saw earlier, I got about here and it was a real struggle to pull this thing back. So for those two reasons, I'm just not going to uh, fire this rifle anymore. I'll just keep it as is. Okay, so my final thoughts. This is a nice rifle. I like it. I just feel that I wish I could be comfortable with shooting it. I feel safe with shooting it. Uh, what I did is by no means telling somebody else out there that they should be doing this and trying this. I did, the, like I said, the research on my load data. Uh, maybe the other rifles might not have this issue with uh, chambering the round. I'm not sure what that problem is. Uh, for my extraction, the first three that I had fired, I did have that issue with, with trying to excuse me, get that bolt pulled back so it would eject. Uh, the last one that I just showed you after the test firing the second time, it, it slid back just like any other one. So um, I don't know if that was just indicative to those three. I guess I could try it again with another test firing and see what my last round would do, but I, I just don't think I wanna go there again. Uh, I'm not advocating shooting one of these or advocating what type of ammo, bullet weight, or grains of powder to use. I've read a lot of different threads and uh, gun boards and different places talking about what they did to convert this as far as reaming it out and soldering in a, a sleeve and having possible issues where those join up and causing um, failure in the receiver. So overall, I, I don't wanna put my face behind the bolt of this rifle any more than what I did. Uh, I felt comfortable as much as I could doing what I, I did. I have an upcoming video. It'll be my uh, first uh, finished Mosin. So hope you watch that one. Okay, so I'm back at home and I decided to get out my Oviedo 1901 Spanish Mauser in the 7mm and see what happens as I'm chambering around as it meets into the bolt face. So I'm going to try to do this one-handed as I video and then we'll take a look at that as I do that. Change. So as I'm bringing it up right in through here, hold on. Okay, so it's not all up in there into the bolt face, just like the Chilean Mauser, yet it's going up into the chamber. And I'm able to close it. So I'm not sure now that I was farther up into the chamber, see, sorry there, that uh, it does fit up there into the bolt face completely. 
So there is something going on on the Chilean Mauser with it wanting to chamber. It's not necessarily it wasn't meeting up into the bolt face correctly. It's just getting it to chamber correctly. So I am going to have to do some more looking on the Chilean Mauser to see if that can be rectified. And then if I can, maybe do some test shooting again and see about that extraction that you could see on my video I was having some problems with. So I'm just not sure. So um, I'll let you guys know if I find out more about it. Okay, I went ahead and pulled out the magazine follower spring floor plate. The one on the right is from the Chilean, and the one on the left is from my Spanish Oviedo Mauser. And you can see that there's a difference on how that spring is on there. So I'm kind of wondering if there's something with that spring that's keeping the front end of the bullet tilted down versus being able to let it rise and follow up into the chamber. Again, uh, more investigation. Um, I'll let you know as I go. Well, I changed out the magazine spring between the Chilean and the Oviedo Spanish Mauser and tried chambering around. That did not make any difference. I also tried changing out the floor plate between the two and using the Spanish Oviedo Mauser in this one, and that did not make any difference either. So it still has to do with a bullet being able to chamber up and through there, and I don't know the reason why it's not.